five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. In this week's episode, we are talking about KickSky, the first incubator for Indian space startups, which is having its demo day of its first cohort tomorrow, 8th of May. I am talking to Anki Danant, partner of Riceberg Ventures and a co-founder of KickSky. We talk about why the timing is right for an Indian space incubator, what the incubation program looks like, and many other things. For full disclosure, E2MC, the space venture fund where I am a partner, is also part of KickSky. If you have any interest in Indian space, don't miss this episode. My name is Raphael Rodkin, and I'm an investor and advisor to space companies. Just as a reminder, this podcast is for informational purposes only, and nothing should be taken as investment advice. This podcast is sponsored by Nanoavionics, a satellite manufacturer and mission integrator. Their technologies enable many space companies worldwide to offer services that improve life right here on Earth, such as providing global connectivity, conducting Earth observation, or contributing to scientific discoveries. Check them out, and also check out my episode with the CEO and co-founder. Sadly, I am not a rocket scientist, but I'm an alumnus of the International Space University. ISU offers a number of educational programs about space worldwide. Check them out at isunet.edu. And just some final things before we start the episode about ourselves. If you enjoy the podcast, please leave us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform, such as Apple or Spotify. If you want us help expand our work, you can do so and support us at www.patreon.com forward slash space business podcast. And we'll also put that link in the episode notes. And lastly, you can follow us on Twitter at podcast underscore space. Welcome back, space enthusiasts, for another episode of the Space Business Podcast. And I'm very happy today to have my friend Ankit Anand as a guest. And among other things, he's a co-founder of the KickSky Space Incubator in India. Welcome, Ankit. Hi. Hi, everyone. So, Ankit, why don't we start off, because you're not just doing KickSky, although that's what we're going to be talking about in this episode. Do you just want to give a general introduction about yourself, please? Yes, yeah, sure. So, yeah, I'm uh, uh, basically uh, an entrepreneur turned VC now, but the primary background goes, I'm a physicist turned entrepreneur turned, uh, turned an investor. So that's th like three words I, I can basically summarize myself. Actually, grew up in India, now living in Zurich, like moved around a few places, like from India to Netherlands, followed by now in Zurich. And uh, yeah, we uh, did a deep tech startup myself, uh, a medtech startup together with a friend. And then from there, we grew into starting to do some angel investing, which turned into Riceberg Venture. So that's short about me. Um, yeah, at Riceberg, we invest in early stage deep tech startups. So that goes, of course, space is one of our core focus. And that's where the kick sky angle comes from. Uh, but among the other things, we also do stuff related to like clean energies or medtech, biotech, uh, cybersecurity, all different areas of deep tech, actually. And so what was your personal rationale and reason to get involved with with KickSky. What fascinates you about Indian space and why do you think, why did you agree that KickSky was a good idea at this point? I mean, the story of KickSky, thanks to you, it just came very spontaneously over a cafe, as you remember, right? So uh, mm -hmm. it wasn't, we can't really say that it was very well, uh, well planned how it came into. The story started on our side that we started investing in a space tech, right? So one of the deal that has a Riceberg team, which is currently the founding partner team that we did together as an angel was Manasu Space. So that's that's where how we got start to get involved in the basically investing in a space tech in India. That was our, let's say, first experience, which was very nice. And and actually, we also both connected through that experience because you are also a co-investor in Manasu. So because of that reason, and also introduced by our common friend, Lucas, who was running this accelerator in uh, Swiss Space Agency, Ruag Space, uh, Beyond Gravity, who, who connected us. And then we met primarily. There were a few angles to meet together that was related definitely to exchange about Manasu, uh, also because both of us are based in Zurich. And that was a moment where you mentioned that, uh, that you were thinking to take it even further because, of course, the, the experience with us. So you also were equally sold as us, right? That why don't we do an accelerator? Uh, and actually, you were already cooking that with Raghu for for about for a while with your partner Raghu in, in that sense. And when it came to me, the I 
I think my side of story was a straightforward. Okay, what does it take to do that? Because at that moment was uh, when can we start? Because the idea was uh, pretty straightforward for us. Uh, I'll go in more detail that why it was there, but the, uh, but before to get into those details, the first reaction was that what does it take? And actually, we sat down there and we carved out few new actionables. Okay, maybe we have to do this, this, this before we can get started. And it looked doable, and that's why we were like, okay, let's give it a try, right? So the short story of formation actually went in that way. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that that answers that part of the question. But uh, happy to also then go uh, why why it's ma- why it matters, why it matters, and why uh, why Kick Sky is playing the role it is. So on this story of uh, firstly, let's start with why India space tech, right? So firstly, why space tech is kind of clear with the way uh, we focus because we are a uh, deep tech investor and space is definitely one of the areas where the new innovations because as a as a deep tech VC, your job is to basically work or keep scouting what is the next uh, basic innovation that is that can actually make a huge difference in the current society that you want to fund, right? So that's the, that's the idea. And you can't ignore space, right? And of course, considering from my physicist background where I have given some understanding about it or even worked on a project, just my space story goes as, as soon as that uh, in my late high school, I worked on a project that was my first paper that I published when I was like 16 year old or something that was on a solar sail, uh, like the light propelled spacecraft. So that was my personal story in the space. Of course, didn't work in the space afterwards, but keep on the sidelines as a physicist, uh, keep doing other stuff. Also, I worked in uh, the area of general relativity while doing my uh, master's as well. So these were all definitely connections that I was connected to the entire space and the knowledge of space. But doing a startup in a space wasn't the first thing. But as coming from a VC, starting a deep tech fund, this was very clear that why not space, right? Because of course, there are stuff happening there. And you also have some know-how that you can bank up. So that was the starting point uh, of space tech in general. But India actually was going through a very interesting point. Of course, we have a bias because we come from there. Uh, so you understand the domain pretty much or understand how things are evolving. But the space tech in India is very different. Uh, by the time I was studying in my high school and actually I wanted to go and work there versus what is it now, right? Because of course, ISRO has done a very amazing job and we all grew up as the ISRO being our national hero, right? That that's the company or that's our organization that unanimously every Indian basically appreciated very much, right? In our generation while growing up. That was the time when Exo was going through the success. When I was in high school, Chandrayaan 1 was launched actually. And one of the professors that uh, that was basically my mentor was part of the project as well. So that inspiration has been with the ISRO always there. But the sad part of this was that if I wanted to work for an ISRO, there was only way that I need to do this national exam and then go and work there, which is very competitive. And I'm not that very competitive guy in that sense. Um, so people like me had not a chance to go and work in space, right? So that was the story, let's say 10 years or 15 years back. Uh, or they had their only limited position to work anything in space. However, with the uh, basically space opening for the private market, Market, this story had changed. Now young people can come out or a young or old doesn't matter, right? But the people can come out of ISRO or even from outside of ISRO and form a company or form a startup and create or give that platform to the people who are interested in that domain to actually work together. And this sounds not very VC language because actually what are you talking about? You're talking about ecosystem or something, but I mean, where is the business? That's the common language that we VC talk about. But if you look in deep tech life, it, things are very different, right? One of the most common debate of deep tech is always the talent debate, right? I mean, you might, might have seen the Elon Musk famous mm-hmm. uh, tweet about the hardware, that why hardware is not happening. It's not about that hardware has a potential or not, right? There is no, nobody did debates that if hardware has a potential or not. One of the common thing that most of the people in this industry agree upon that say that there is no talent in hardware, probably, or there is a lack of talent in hardware. That's why uh, it's hard to make these hardware startups successful normally. But then if there is an, a talent pot is opening up, then we have to look for it. And India was going through that transition that there is a talent pot which is opening up. And it's also a very interesting event that normally it's about that has happened. And actually, you can see that pattern in a lot of these startups that is coming out of India today. India did a good thing of starting something called Indian Institute of um, Space, basically, uh, IAST, that was already 15 years back almost. And during that time, there is a cohort of people who basically you can, so that was the first time when I was in high school, that was the first few time you can get to that college and just study space, right? So you can have five years education dedicated to space technology, and then you had a guaranteed job in ISRO. That was the premise on which this institute was launched. Now that people went and did five years of uh, education in that university, then worked for ISRO for around 10 years. And now they are the people who are educated in space, worked for a decade in space, and they are still young, they are still in their 30s, and they want to 
to do uh, something new, right? They want to do something, go out and work something uh, on their own. And they are, they have that entrepreneurial ap- uh, aptitude. This cohort is a very golden period of time that is actually India going through. And that's one of the reasons why this is so it's like a 15 or 20 years of work that has gone. Uh, people only see that there is a cool space tech startup coming up. But if you start to really closely look the pattern, there is a lot ha- happened on the background that made these years, this particular decade, very special for space tech in India. That goes from not only privatization, but also that education that was happening before. And they were a very uncorrelated event that coincidentally coincided now in these years. So if you look those closely, then of course it makes sense that there is a talent, they are trained, they are experienced, and they know the frugal mindset. And then a third part is that ISRO's own frugality, frugal mindset, mindset right? That is, ISRO has been known for doing things for cheap, right? Just because there were less resources. And mm-hmm. this is exactly what startups have to do. Because normally in any other bureaucratic organization, if these people are coming out, they will be very much a, uh, going through the process. But ISRO is very unique uh, government organization, which is always worked on a premise of frugality. And that is also what is needed for startup. So that talent is coming out now and forming these startups. So if you are the one who is investing in a space tech sector and you know, you are aware, and I mean, you have been part of it because you have, I mean, I said my personal experience has gone through it. So I didn't need convincing that why this is this is happening now, right? This is something that you have observed and it's, uh, then you have to be part of it. I mean, it would be a shame not to be a part of it. So that's where the investing in a space tech actually goes through. Of course, that didn't happen in a very planned way because coming to Manasu space was very different reason that how we got involved. But when we saw, okay, wow, this is this is what is happening in India and then reflected back why and why now, why it wasn't mm-hmm. there five years back and why mm-hmm. five years later would be different. Then these all stories started to add up together. And that's why it's not just one off shot of Manasu that we got to find a good deal. Actually, there will be more things coming out and how can we be part of it, right? And then Kick Sky is basically that part of that initiative and then the very last aspect of this which, which is important also that we have to understand that among all this story, what was missing? So during the the period when we invested in Manasu, we also realized that everything is out there. There is a talent. It's ready to make the startup. Uh, they are already doing it. They are very frugal. But in investor community, there is still a very much gap to understand space is a commercial business because, and which is totally understandable because people have grew up seeing space. Space is done by ISRO, uh, ISRO space is done by NASA, uh, these kind of people. So what is business space? right and then anybody who knows business in space they only know Elon Musk right and they just think always that okay Elon Musk did that because he was just very rich right uh, so that's that's the common notion about space right so if there is a business out there so there is a business part in investor community that education was missing and this is the gap that we can fill in the kick sky right by running an accelerator you tap into the talent early on you educate that talent towards how the business development to fundraising looks like you create the momentum and community around it where all these investors can be involved and they can understand how they can uh, develop their confidence. And you are bringing these two sides actually also together while you are also investing in them, right? I mean, because the unique part of Sky is that it's not just an accelerator, it's actually backed or like even founded by two of us VCs, right? So uh, for us, it's our personal interest is also to be able to invest in these startups if some great story comes out from there, right? So that adds together. So I took a bit long uh, to explain, Mm -hmm. but uh, I hope it gave you some picture. Uh, I mean, of course, you are aware of it, so you don't need picture but probably audience need some more picture <laughs> some no, thank more you i think i think that was that, that was that was that was very that was very useful in terms of understanding what is going on in india and why both of us are so excited about the indian space ecosystem because as you mentioned isro has had a very long standing very proud space tradition already but for commercial space sector to really be born now and, and take off that is because of the reasons you mentioned that there is really now this amazing you know group of graduated engineers this is amazing group of talent available um actually the other thing that um uh, that is going on maybe you can uh, sp- speak a couple of minutes about that is that also the government has gone through some well including isro has gone through some interesting changes which basically also support the development of a commercial space sector right yeah, that's very interesting for sure. So actually, uh, privatization of space in India, which was actually a playbook built by NASA back in early 2000, which created the entire American space industry uh, in a way, is also started to happen, let's say, almost five years back, right? So first draft of, let's say, privatization of space in India was something around 2019. 
uh, where it was firstly proposed that why why don't we uh, take away some of the commercial opportunity out from ISRO? Again, I'm not uh, I'm not much been involved pre there, so I can't comment why and how what go thought process got. But I can have my own guess. But guess was very clear, right? Because ISRO suddenly soon also started to do a lot of commercial activity in past ten years, actually, right? So PSLV after its own success were launching space uh, uh, basically satellites from all over the world right which was purely a commercial play for isro right and after an institute regular institution which has focus was mostly exploratory or a normal national sovereignty uh, issues start to do also commercial operation it makes sense for uh, any government to understand that okay let's start to separate and of course there was a willingness also in general the the move of uh, deinstitutionalization and putting more private and more uh, private capital out there that momentum was building across all industry, not only in space. And that definitely good part with the entire ecosystem came together that actually took that move, right? So that privatization started. Funny part is that some of our startup, like, you know, Manaswi Space was even pre that, right? They were, they founded it anyway, irrespective uh, the policies were in place or not, which is the most bold thing that you can say out of entrepreneur that they didn't care, right? They just wanted to do something about it. But uh, some of the startups were even founded before, but formally those policies started to get drafted. And then basically in actually last year, not long ago, we had a proper, uh, basically a proper space policy defined, right? So the proper space policy got defined uh, last year. And since then, basically uh, recently, like just like couple, one month back or two months back, we also got final guidelines around foreign direct investment in this area. So since we have been involved, let's say two years as a VC in this entire ecosystem, right? Uh, so far, we have also gone through that entire change, right? So we are learning on the go how, how this is evolving. But of course, it all started with that willingness to do the privatization, then create the startup ecosystem. And that uh, that basically space take a startup policy came in the picture and then also foreign direct investment. And that all were a clear indicator from the government because normally biggest risk any VC would ask is what, right? That, okay, even if you make that space ticket startup, who's going to buy it? Is government going to personally interested in buying these things or is going to personally interested in buying these things or um, they going to do it themselves, right? Because if they just want to do all the things by themselves, then there is very less uh, limited opportunity for other players to play. But these all indicators were very clear and they were tangible to see that, no, there is a willingness to basically work together with the private industry. And we have been part of it, right? We are part of all these associations. We gave all the feedback to primarily government institution, which was actually also adapted very quickly, right? So, I mean, FDI, I remember like last year in during India Space Congress, we talked about, uh, I mean, all of us as a as an entire community talked about FDI that we need guidelines. And within next six months, it came out as well. So that momentum is also very positive. That actually gives the confidence, not only for the local investor, but also for global investor community that, government is willing to work together if we build something tangible in the ecosystem. And that is also definitely a very uh, important part of this entire equation. Indeed. And it's, it's interesting, um, you keep mentioning Manas2, and, and just for our listeners' benefit, um, you may not remember, Manas2 is an Indian chemical propulsion startup that both um, Ankit's fund, Riceberg, and then the fund that I run when I don't do a podcast, E2MC, has invested in in their, in their first round. And uh, there's actually a, a podcast episode with Manas2's um, founder CEO uh, Tusha, uh, Tusha uh, um, yeah. available from a few months ago that um, listeners can look up. But anyway, um, as you correctly mentioned, Manas2 was, was very bold and actually started doing these things where not all of the government support was as evident as as it is today. But uh, on the other hand, they are now benefiting from it, right? So as an example that uh, really the things are happening now and the government is giving out contracts to private companies, um, Manas2 has already received, I think from memory, it's a $2 million US dollar equivalent contract from the Indian Defense Ministry. Yep, that's correct, yeah. Okay, so we all agreed, we were sitting in this coffee shop uh, in Zurich, all of this was going on, um, you know, after we sort of went through the required five minutes of complaining that a coffee in Zurich is as expensive as a meal, probably a full, <laughs> yes. a full meal in yeah. India. <laughs> we started talking about this, we got, yeah. we got very excited. And uh, I think both of us also realized that, you know, these, these, potential new entrepreneurs, these new entrepreneurs and the potential new entrepreneurs that want to benefit from all of the things which are going on in, in, in Indian space, they would need help in the way that you described, you know, to connect them to the investor community, to help them on the business side, because many of them, are, of course, are engineers by training. And I think both of us very quickly realized that we didn't think there was anything structured out there yet, right? 
And hence, it would make sense to set up a incubator slash accelerator like KickSky. So let's talk about KickSky specifically a little bit. Do you want to describe? So of, of course, then it took months of us talking and, uh, you know, developing all of this. But where did we end up? Like, you know, what is KickSky's structure? What does its program look like? And, and, and so on. Mm-hmm. Sure. So, I mean, in one life, what KickSky does or what is the goal of KickSky is primarily finding the talented entrepreneur who already have a tangible uh, idea or tangible uh, uh, product that they want to work upon. and But they are not yet investable, right? So they come to us, we really like these people and we say, okay, would love to be part of it, but we are just too early. Uh, you're not yet investable. And basically go, taking them through this structured program of three to six months, when I say three to six months, it's like three months active and three another three months as a passive engagement to get to a stage where we can say that, okay, now this startup is actually investable. So basically we always joke about that. We basically are trying to create that scale. Like in, in, in space, we talk about TRL level, technical readiness level, similarly like IRL, like investor, investor investment readiness level, right? Mm-hmm. That we are basically bringing them from IRL one or two to IRL eight and nine, basically in this case, right? So that's the that's the goal of the Kick Sky. That's, that's what we are working towards and everything else is basically how of it, that how do we make sure um, that a startup which has a great founder and a very good high potential idea, but in yet need help. And what are the all those help to be able to raise something significant uh, uh, money to be able to execute their vision? Um, because as you know, in a space tech bootstrapping doesn't really last very long, right? At the end, you need uh, you need capital to be able to uh, make something because it's a, it's at the end it's a hardware, it's a product that you are trying to build a lot of time. So that was the that's the gap that we wanted to fill in, right? And that's what we started. Uh, as far as program structure is concerned, uh, concerned, like you know, I mean, it's primarily uh, like you know, we have one person who are like three, which is our mutual team member who actually runs that entire part. Uh, but the structure that there are actually three phases of the program that right, that we call. So normally, I'll start even pre uh, pre program that how and what how people can get involved. So normally, of course, startups reach out or sometimes we do active reach out to the startup where we think they can be a potential candidate for uh, for KickSky, right? And basically get get to know, to verify that do we like that founder or do we believe the potential in the founder and the team and the idea or not on a fundamental level, right? And that's where they get into the selection program when a few people apply and few get selected. But then once they are in the program, the structure of the program uh, goes in this way that there are three phases to it, right? Uh, first phase, what you can call it idea curation in a way, right? Or idea refinement, uh, you can call it. So that's the phase one. Very much theoretical. It's very like a classroom kind of a step where we actually are trying to get them, get their head together to work out on paper that what they are doing is making sense or not. And that goes from all dimensions, right? It goes from uh, the technology to it or the business associated to it or even basically working the exercise if this, you are the right team to do it or not, right? So that's the more theoretical part of it. But then it start to get more uh, practical when there is a second part, which is one-on-one every startup basically gets a mentor assigned to them. And the goal of the second phase is to develop a tangible traction that is not blah, blah, and it's not just a uh, pitch deck, but whatever pitch deck or any idea that you have finally defined that this is something that we all agree upon is a high potential idea, what is the traction you can develop during that period? And where startups have to definitely work on by themselves to make that tra- develop that traction, but you are assigned one-on-one mentor who is basically tracking you or helping you and also pulling in other resources as and when required during that entire period. And then the phase three starts once you have a good idea, you have the great team, you have a traction that is decent enough to raise your first pre-seed or seed round, whichever stage you are in, then finally we go to the classic accelerator work. So like what other accelerator does is basically preparing your pitch deck or preparing your uh, like, you know, how to pitch to investors to a mock a mock pitch and all these kind of things, which any other accelerator does. We start that on a very last stage, right? That's the third part of the journey where we already are confident that, okay, now they have great thing. Now it's just you, they just need to make it nicely presentable, right? So the work on the presentable is start doesn't start before you have, I mean, you you can't make presentable and specifically in this domain uh, or any deep tech domain, you can't make any random thing uh, presentable, right? You need also some, what we call like a meat on the bone, right? Uh, that there need to be some depth and a content that can be presented. So if you first phase, two phases is to develop that depth and content 
something tangible. And then the third phase is to prepare to be able to present, uh, make presentable, which leads to final demo day, which is coming in. I, I don't know when the podcast will be published, but either before or this, but it's actually on uh, next week. Uh, so uh, that's 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 how the program lives in demo day where we invite other investors also and we also try to engage all these other investors even early on as a as a mentor right so that's that's the phases of the program and of course how we support it of course we both are involved so our entire team is involved in the process but we also loop in mentors from across industry they can be vcs to uh, expert from the space tech or just operators in this industry or of even founder in this industry who are constantly engaged where all these mentors that are assigned to the startup can pull in resources for them as and when required right and uh, the core goal is to get people engaged as early as possible to develop that conviction over a period of time because it's not an industry where you can have one call and say, okay, I want to invest in this startup, right? You need uh, you need uh, more time to really uh, spend there and comprehend that what, what's going on. So the overall goal is to basically institutionalize that time that is spent with these kind of startup to be able to really build conviction either for a VC to be able to invest in them, but also for the sector expert to be an advisor in them because their time is also highly valuable, right? So if you also want to be an advisor in a startup, you want to also spend time with them to identify is that the right startup for you or not, right? Um, and the basic principle that we are also trying to follow that if let's say certain, it's not like that every startup that starts in the beginning, they have to come to the demo day uh, always, right? If we see that somebody is not ready yet, they can, take longer time, right? They can take like even because we have first three months, which is active, but remaining six, another three months, they can be passively engaged and they can come to the demo day of next cohort as well. So there is no uh, no real time pressure because it's not industry where you can say, okay, either in three months, either you are right or wrong, right? It, it can take time. So not everybody who enters need to go to the demo day, only the one where we think that, okay, now they are ready, they should be going there. So I hope that explained the, the entire program structure. Yes, I thank you. Thank you for that. And I, I feel like maybe we should do like a, a couple of um, calls, so to say, about some of the things you mentioned here. One is on the mentor pool. And, and maybe you can just briefly describe what kind of yeah. people we have as mentors right now. And then I, I think we're probably open to having more mentors. So if people are interested, you know, if people have um, entrepreneurial or investor or other relevant backgrounds and are interested in the Indian space ecosystem, we're probably happy for them to contact us and apply, right? Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, so mentor pool is exactly right. So we normally try to the, we try to build the entire mentor pool uh, on the different areas that people start up may need support. So that can start from, of course, just a founder. Let's say if there is a founder who have raised money and these people have not raised money, they are the one of the best vendor for them to identify that what they did right and how they looked at everything right and having that because they have not been in their shoes long ago right. So they can actually uh, basically give share that insp inspiration with them some hands-on experience with them. So that's the first part. Let's say just the founders, a specific founder. Typically also a few of them are also our portfolio founders as well, but also they need not to be our portfolio founder. Anybody, anywhere are a founder in a space tech have gone through their zero to one journey or even zero to 0.5 journey, doesn't matter, right? They they are most welcome to be involved as a kick's guy to support the next generational uh, entrepreneurs, right? So first part is founders. Then second part is of course operators. So if they, let's say you are operating uh, you are any leadership of any uh, late stage startup, right? Which is a quite a lot established, whether it can be, I mean, SpaceX, if we still want to call it a startup or uh, or any even uh, mid stage, like, you know, Skyroot or um, uh, or other other guys that is that is out all across the world, right? So, so you can be even operator of those startups, right? Who can be involved. But then, so that's like the founder side, you know? So that's the startup side of people. But then it's also more important to bring industry side of people because at the end, either they have to work, uh, do a business with them, either they're going to be a customer, they're going to be a uh, a partner or something. So there we try to loop in people who are working in a space industry in different capacity in some sort of either engineering leadership role or even a management leadership role or even in a business and marketing area, all different aspects of it. So those are the people who can be involved. And in, but then there are people also who are not directly in the space tech industry, but their role is very crucial. For example, people like legal support ecosystem, right? So we we work with few of the uh, law uh, 
agencies who are basically have experience of helping space tech startups through their regulatory or legal compliances, right? And that's also a very important part of the equation, right? So we also bring in those legal experts in the among the mentorship, right? So we have those legal experts in the mentorship. Uh, of course, government institutions like ISROs and NASA out of the world, anybody in and out involved with there, they are always welcome to also support uh, and join in, or even the semi or like, you know, government and private bridging authorities like in, in space, which is uh, the Indian government organization, basically, which is bridging its road to the private ecosystem, right? So all these people are also most welcome. Uh, they are also, some of them are already involved and some, some of them are most welcome to join. So that's that's the part of the entire equation, right? So these are all different type of people and they we would love to be welcome people from all around the world. And also just that, I mean, uh, just to tease that Kixkai though we started first year focused on India, but as we are now growing and we are opening up to all around the world. Um, so people, and of course the goal is to create that global community of these leaders, right? So that's the interesting part of that mentorship that Kixkai wasn't the only solving also the problem of the startup who needed help. A lot of time these people who can be potentially uh, are very excited to support new entrepreneurs, but they also didn't have a common platform to be able to support it. And they were also reaching out to us, how can I be involved, right? As a VC, right? Hey, invest in a space tech. Can I help any of your portfolio, right? Now, basically Kixkai is giving that opportunity also to the people to be involved and get more engaged with these startup um, during the program, which can also later lead into a formal engagement with them. If they want to be later an advisor, they can also work, work that out. And of course, the last part of the equation that I didn't mention is the VCs, right? So any VCs who are either already investing in space tech or are curious about it, but they they are, they don't they don't know yet where to start. They are also most welcome to join. And a couple of the VCs are already in the. I mean, all, apart from us as well, uh, they are already part of the mentorship panel of Kixkai as well. So that's that's the entire pool of mentor we need. And currently, we have people from all the sectors, but always welcome to bring more and more people to create this um, the large impact. And uh, as, as Rahul mentioned, and right. Please yeah. reach out we'll if you want the, to be a mentor. We'll put the details on the uh, we will put the details on the um on, in the episode notes where people can reach out mm -hmm. if they're interested in in applying as mentors. And the second call I wanted to make uh, is um, you were just talking about the VC. So as you said, we have demo day coming up. It's going to be on the eighth of May. I think this episode may actually come out one or two days before then. We'll see. Uh, but the demo day is going to be on the eighth of May. It is going to be in hybrid format, so people don't have to be in Bangalore and in India to attend to demo day, they can uh, basically zoom in. So, you know, I think we also want to make a call to any interested investors who want to follow this demo day, and this could be VCs, but I think it could also be other types of investors, um, angels, corporate VCs, uh, corporates, and so on. And uh, we'll also put the relevant details in the episode notes where interested investors can to contact us to, to join for demo day. Now, Ankit, we've talked basically a lot about what the program looks like on a you know theoretical level but we have now as i said demo days coming up we basically about to close out the first real cohort we've actually done this right so do you want to now switch to the practical mode so to say and actually describe what it all looked like in, in in practice what what was the first cohort actually as a fun fact you should also mention the the name of the cohort and what that means for our non-indian listeners and then what the mm -hmm. cohort looks like looked like or looks like since it's still ongoing what kind of startups we have how the um the application and selection process went any sort of interesting you know anecdotes and experiences you remember from the first cohort and and yeah Let's talk about the first cohort. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, name of cohort is was actually Pratham, which primarily means uh, first in uh, in Hindi or Sanskrit uh, in that that way. And uh, interesting enough, also the first student satellite project from India was also named at the same uh, Pratham as well. So that was very easy choice. I think we debated on some name if I remember correctly, but I think this was uh, yeah, easily did. chose upon, right? Because it also sounds very good. It's a very powerful word, mm -hmm. uh, Pratham to use it. So yeah, that's a Kohut Pratham that, uh, that is out there. And um, currently we have five startups from India and one from Nepal. Uh, which was which became part of it actually the let's say or probably only uh, space tech startup from Nepal uh, they reached out to us and we were like oh wow that that's amazing right we were very impressed to see that somebody having that ambition in even a neighboring country like Nepal right so yeah I didn't expect that and also, I, yeah. I can't I can't help I can't help making the stupid joke that uh, we want Nepalese space startups because they're the people who are actually closest to space but anyway <laughs> oh yeah that's 
never thought about it but <laughs> they gonna love it for that so i think they 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 got a new keyboard for their fish day <laughs> that okay they are the closest to space right <laughs> so amazing um, so yeah so that's that's the cohort composition and they go from all different like the nepalese startup where you are talking about voyager marine is actually a launcher startup but then we have a startup like orbitate which is basically doing in space refueling then uh, we have a startup like uh, Auxens Lab, which is basically developing a quantum enhanced sensor. Uh, I I don't know if you want me to name all of these, or shall I already give a brief of all these all these startups? Or? I think I think I think um, you know since it's gonna again the episode is probably gonna come out one or two days beforehand. I I see no harm in sort of giving like you know just the the, the one line summary of the business model. Maybe yeah. I think that's interesting. Sure. So, um, so yeah, so as we mentioned, Voyager Mine is a launcher startup and their core problem, again, because it's not like yet another launcher company, the core is that landlocked con- con- countries have a definitely a challenge to be able to launch from their own uh, for primarily regulatory and geographical reason. And they are working to solve that problem. So that's that's the core story of Voyager Mine. Uh, then we have uh, Orbitate, which is primarily working on in-space refueling, because as we know that satellite lifetime is pretty much tied up to that how long the fuel that used for propelling that startup actually lasts, right? And if one can refuel these startups in space, then you can basically extend the lifetime and create less of the space debris out there. So that's the problem that Orbitate is working upon. Uh, Auxens Lab is uh, not necessarily just a space tech because it, its application can go all across. They are primarily working on a quantum enhanced sensor, uh, which basically can be used to uh, may, uh, develop uh, the sensors under, let's say, I, I would call it, let's say, a, a structural uh, uh, object or chemical composition under the surface of the earth. So it's basically a more penetrating, uh, larger depth penetrating uh, sensor that they are developing, which can be put on a satellite, but can also be put on a drone as well. So that's primarily has applications all across from disaster management to mining space as well. Uh, Now, minings as well. And then we have uh, uh, Zovian, which is also developing uh, primarily radio sensors. Uh, technology as well. One of the core applications they are working towards uh, that basically maritime navigation, because a lot of time we always think about, uh, you know, like navigation is a kind of a salt problem. But if you look how maritime navigation works, it's still so uh, old school. Uh, basically, they are trying to solve towards that problem, right? So, and then did I name everybody? And then we have Flywheel, which is working towards ADCS. So there are, these are six, I hope, yeah, I mentioned Voyager, Flywheel, Orbitate, Zovian, um, and uh, Oxens Lab, and one more uh, that is uh, well-known space, which is working towards uh, in-space experiment, uh, which is also a domain that uh, you're also very close to, right? So mm-hmm. probably you will bio-labs. describe that business much mm-hmm. better. Uh, so basically, they are developing biolabs in space. Um, so that, that's the composition of the cohort. Um, and uh, definitely, you will hear, I won't spoil too much, so people should hear with them during the demo day uh, as well, what they are doing. And of course, all these links are also available on Kicksky, uh LinkedIn page uh, that they can actually follow all these startups or even reach out to us if they are interested in any, any of these startups, basically. What are some of the things you most remember from this experience of going through your first incubator cohort as a co-organizer? Uh, so first thing was actually creating the assignments. Uh, that was, the, I mean, my personal uh, experience, that was the most uh, memorable thing because, you know, uh, we always as a VC talk about that, okay, uh, we look for this and we look for that and we look for that in a startup, right? But actually putting it in a structure that you can give it to the startup that they can prepare themselves towards that, right? And we basically check all those. Uh, and it's not about checking the boxes that do what a VC need, right? But basically getting that first principle thinking why this startup even matters, right? So that exercise itself was a very fun exercise, right? Where, I mean, all of us contributed towards it. Um, and of course, one can have one way of looking at things, right? I mean, we we are two funds even in ball, right? And both of us might be looking at a startup in a very different way, right? And coming to a common ground that, okay, this is, this is what should be uh, what if the startup has, then it will be nice, nice to actually get started. So that was my first personal experience. That was great. And then also sometimes checking the first assignments because then when the first assignment came and then you're like, okay, no guys, you can do much, much better. Right. And I remember that uh, after first assignment, we had to kind of turn a lot of them back and say, Hey, can you do it again? But the quality of a start assignment really improved because of course, these people didn't know what to expect out of an assignment. Right. But once we explain, Hey, this is not what we are expecting. This is what we are expecting. So we gave a review call right after the first assignment 
so, uh, to all these startups. And even she did a lot of that work to give him the feedback that why it's not sufficient. And the next next one improved quite a lot, right? This, when they resubmitted the same assignment. So that was the first first part of the experience. Of course, uh, having great people on board, I, I hosted Tushar uh, during one of the uh, conversations as well. That was the first conversation. And as you said, right, because he has been also Tushar. Uh, just for audience like Manasu Space CEO. Uh, so he was indirectly involved in bringing this together because he was the startup that we all both came together and that's how it all started. So having on board and getting him to share firsthand experience was also a very experience, uh, fun part. But of course, apart from that, the most part that I enjoyed is a one-on-one mentor- mentorship session, right? So I primarily, uh, two of the startups, I did the mentorship session. And uh, that was the most fun part of my day, right? Every every week, at least the weekly call that we do, that I always looked forward to. And also, of course, in between, they always reach out. But at least that weekly call that is out there uh, and that is still going on. So it's not yet over. Uh, that's something that I'm definitely going to remember the most. And, and and I suspect we speak, I speak for both of us when I say that, you know, we are very happy with how this went with the first cohort. And we're like really excited to continue doing this and expand uh, kicks kind yeah. of many more cohorts. So in, in this vein, do you want to speak about our future plans and, you know, when the next cohort may come up and how people can get involved? Yes. So yeah, actually we're going to be starting the next cohort, uh, let's say early July or late June. Uh, we are timing to with India Space Congress, which is happening around uh, 26 of uh, June. So the exact dates will be will announced during that period. So the next, this cohort is graduating now. We have a uh, a month or two to basically put the reflection together and start the next cohort and also do the recruitment for the next cohort as well. Actually, as we talk, the recruitment for next cohort is also already ongoing. So if you are a startup, want to be a part of it, you can already reach out. Applications are also already open. So we have already screened through few startups and the next months, once this first cohort is uh, over, the active phase of first cohort is over, we'll do even more uh, aggressive screening and evaluation calls. So that will be the plan for next cohort. The format gonna be the same. So the more or less as we as you mentioned that we are very we were very happy with the way it turned out. So mostly we'll be using the same format of these three phases. Um, only thing we will add that we'll add more and more mentors to it. And another most important part that we're gonna change from the next cohort that we are opening it for the global startup who want to be a part of it. So that's the most important uh, part. Of course, uh, India remains one of our uh, because. So that's where we are quite excited about. But we also want uh, other global startup to be involved for two reasons. Of course, because we know that talent can come from anywhere, right? And they all need support. Uh, that while we are also investing quite a lot, almost globally, we know that the other startup reached out to us that, hey, can we be a part of it? So that is one important part. But then the second part is also to be able to... Um, create that ecosystem because if we are talking about that we want to support this startup to get that global perspective if let's say india to the world story always we talk about in space tech which is important then there has to be people from the world other part of the world and not only investor but also other entrepreneurs representing that side of the world right that if let's say a global startup wants an access to indian ecosystem they can be a great uh, use that help or use the platform and other way around that if indian startup want to use for a global ecosystem then they can get that so that's what we are excited about we still have to work out the detail uh, of that entire how we will open of course i have already reached out to the people and i assume that you have done the same in the global ecosystem whoever we know that hey if you have a good recommendation then please mention um and um, yeah that's probably this is first public call for the global startups to come in i think so this this podcast might also help to to spread the word yeah and i think while you're mentioning global maybe a sort of uh, important point related to that which maybe we haven't made clearly enough sort of um us being a, a us fund here as a co-founder and you with all your international experience i mean while we think there's obviously um, a very significant space industry to build within india i think part of what we can bring as the incubator as well is to help people like to the extent they want to expand to places like the US or Europe or other Asian countries, we can certainly help them with that as well. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. So for startups, uh, any sort of uh, entrepreneur um, who's now listening to this and uh, wants to apply, um, we'll put the Kisky webpage in the episode notes. And yeah, please don't feel shy. You can already contact us, even though there is not a specific uh, date yet. As you mentioned, or as I keep mentioning, it will be around the, the India Space Congress. But please feel free to contact us um, anytime via the website. 
Ankit, um, you may know the last question in this podcast is always the same question. It's um, about science fiction. And so I'm going to ask you as well, what is uh, your favorite science fiction? It could be books, TV series, uh, movies, anything. I mean, of course, I'll be biased. Uh, Interstellar is <laughs> the science fiction that uh, I enjoyed the most. Um, and uh, actually, it was pre that I started to invest in uh, space tech, uh, of course. So I still enjoyed those. Uh, interesting part of the story is that uh, I worked on a LIGO Virgo project, which is gravitational wave project. Uh, fortunately, or coincidentally, the same year we got the Nobel Prize. And one of the Nobel Prize winners, who were, say, the leader of that entire research, or one of our bosses, is Kip Throne, who was also co writer of uh, basically Interstellar. So mm -hmm. there is some common connect, or at least I, I, I am aware of the story that how Interstellar basically evolved. And that makes it me even more biased towards it. So definitely that's the name uh, I'm going to pick for, for this episode. That's, that's definitely a good one. And uh, as you may suspect, that's not the first time this has been has been mentioned as favorite science, science fiction. You know, I, I just realized, and I can't help asking, um, I, I realized that I never asked myself whether with India's own homegrown uh, significant uh, movie and TV production, what, what we colloquially mm -hmm. know as, as Bollywood, is there a lot of sci-fi in Bollywood? Unfortunately, not actually. So um, again, this is a second anecdote uh, uh, about me that I also produce movies and I produce some regional movies in India. Uh, so that's it. So I'm a bit, I can go a bit much longer on the entire movie industry. But uh, short answer, uh, there are, there have been attempt to make sci-fi movies in India, but uh, so far nothing that really stands out. And that's very unfortunate why um, uh, I'm, I have stronger reasons that why or why yeah, not. This doesn't make uh, sense, right? Because we're talking about how space excited India is. So mm -hmm. maybe it's also the right time for this. You know what? It's It feels to me like we should schedule another coffee in Zurich, the two of us. And this time we'll brainstorm <laughs> how we're going to make a Bollywood sci-fi movie. And I think I can't close this on any better note. So I could thank you so yeah. much for coming on and talking about KickSky, a project we're both super excited about. And we can't really wait to continue and to help build India as a uh, space industry. Yeah, thank you for having me. Really enjoyed the conversation. Thanks. Well, that's it for another nominal episode of the Space Business Podcast. If you like this podcast, please consider giving it a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform, such as iTunes. You can follow us on Twitter at podcast underscore space. Also consider supporting us at www.patreon.com forward slash space business podcast. If the podcast got you interested in learning more about the business opportunities in the space economy, check out my new online course on space entrepreneurship on udemy.com. The link is in the episode description. Lastly, if you have any feedback, including ideas for guests, and that may include yourself if you have an exciting space story to tell, or interested in being a sponsor, drop us an email at spacebusinesspodcast at gmail.com. I look forward to seeing you for the next episode.